Hey everybody, welcome to another Low on Health a Game video review where I go over some of the games I've been playing recently. Uh, this particular review I will be talking about back, uh, Batman Arkham City for the 360 and Battlefield 3 uh, for the 360. Uh, let's go ahead and just start this off real quick. Batman Arkham City, of course, is the follow-up to Bartman, uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, which was a really great game back in 2009. Kind of one of the probably best Batman games and one of the better comic book adaptation games that we've had in a very long time. Uh, this follow-up... It's okay. It just feels a little bit, a little bit less of Arkham uh, Asylum, despite it being in a big open city. Um, what I think my biggest problem with it is they try to cram way too much into this game. Uh, like basically towards the end of the game, because you have so many kind of end game characters, like big plot developments, it almost just seems like it keeps rambling on at the end. We're like, okay, I did this part. Oh yeah, there's also this one thing, and there's also this one thing. Like right at the end, just overall the pacing of the game just seems really kind of off or rushed. They just try to cram way too much. It's still a good game. It's still fun. It's still fluid. Um, I do think they went a little overboard with the Riddler stuff, which was kind of, of a fun little side thing in the first one, but almost this time around, it feels almost like that. You're going to spend most of your time doing the Riddler stuff, kind of like the uh, uh, Jody Orbs in Crackdown, but it just almost feels more like they're just everywhere, and it just feels really just weird. I just don't like it. Um, but that part of it, the Riddler part, is still they're still fun. They just they seem way too much, but it's still an overall game. It's still open, uh, open world, as you can see here. It's not that big of a world. I, for some reason, because it's not Gotham City, it's Arkham City, you start to realize it is kind of a small environment when you, when you break it all down. It's still a fun game. The combat is still great. Um, you can just see all my notes in the, 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 in the description below. But I enjoyed it. Um, you know, I just didn't like it as much as the other one. Uh, the next thing I'm talking about is going to be Battlefield 3. Um, now, of course, when it goes for online shooters, I'm not a huge Battlefield 3 fan. I do like, or Battlefield fan, I do like playing the games every now and then just because it's something different. Uh, Battlefield 1942 is kind of a nice little diversion every now and then I'll play. Um, but their last kind of game, uh, Bad Company 2, I liked a lot because it did a really good job of having like a single player campaign. Now, unfortunately, because I was renting Battlefield 3, I, was not, I did not get an uh, online passcode and I wasn't going to buy one. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to play like the online co-op missions, which are just limited to two people, unlike the Onslaught and Bad Company, which was four, or play the online multiplayer, which, as you think about, it, is the majority of the game. That's what it's there for. Um, so I am actually just kind of reviewing the game on its single-player campaign. In which case, if you do that, most people say it's the worst part of the game. In which case, it, it is. Um, <laughs> not playing the other parts, of course. But uh, just going from Bad Company 2 to this, it's it's a, just a real just kind of step back. The game does look great. The game sounds great. The you know the high points for me for the game are the airplane pilot, the uh, fighter moments, and the tank because the soundscape on those was just perfect. Even though they did feel kind of out of place from a narrative standpoint, and the narrative and story itself does kind of feel like it was ripping off Black Ops or just every other game, if not trying to be original. But uh, it's just really weird. It's just not as great as I had hoped it to be, but that once again is the campaign. There's annoying QTEs which severely feel out of place in the game. And uh, it's just really weird. I didn't enjoy it. And that's, of course, because I just played it in the campaign. That's my own fault. In which case, I'm going to do a little rant here. You can read my notes on the design and gameplay of Battlefield 3. But uh, overall, like bo these both games have really heavy, to me, like DLC stuff, where they're just not complete games. Every time I booted up Batman, it asked me if I wanted to input the Catwoman code or buy the Catwoman code to unlock her, uh, her character and her missions. In which case, that should be relegated to an option menu, not thrown in my face every time I play the game. Battlefield 3. I installed the texture packs and everything, which is fine. I'm not going to argue that. Uh, but once I there's a little button that, hey, let's see what your friends are playing. I hit that, and then it popped up, oh, you have to have online pass. I was like, I just want to check the friend status on the... No, you have to have online pass. And I'm just like... I understand why they're doing it. I really do. But it's just, I think, really shitty that they do it that way when games like Gears of War 3 can produce a game that's a complete package. Solid single player, solid multiplayer, solid waves mode. I mean, Battlefield doesn't even have like a waves mode where you fight bots or anything. Even Call of Duty's picked up on that, for God's sakes. But it's just weird that it's a barrier to entry. And unfortunately, when people ask me what I think about Battlefield 3, I'm actually just giving them my opinion off of the single player. And if they want to know, I say, hey, you know, if you're gonna buy it used or whatnot, or you go buy it some other ways, just play Battle, uh, ba you know, play Call of Duty. It's gonna come down to Call of Duty Modern Warfare, but it's just like just play other games or other games that are just way better, um, especially single player campaign wise. But just from an overall like preference, and people ask me my opinion, I'm not gonna give Battlefield 3 a great opinion. And of course, along with Batman, people are having problems with their codes. Battlefield is probably apparently having server issues up and down the whole wazoo. But it's just really sad that that's where we've come to gaming, where it's like all this DLC stuff, and especially. Uh, seem to think Catwoman is probably more or less on the disc itself. So, I mean, it's just weird how, like, you know, if you were by the game down the road, that data is probably on the disc, and you're not, you know, it's just weird that you really don't, when you buy a disc, you're not buying everything on it anymore, and that was my big issue with uh, 
the Katamari game for the 360. It was like 30 bucks, but then you had to down, uh, buy all the other levels and all the stuff that were already on the disc. Um, but it's just really weird. I just didn't like it that much. So from a campaign standpoint, which is most of the time I play games for the story-based content, that's just kind of subpar. And it's just sad that other games out there have been doing way better jobs of giving you a good experience of both. And especially from DICE themselves, Bad Company 2 was great. It had great character interaction, good level variety. The level variety in Battlefield 3 for the campaign was just horrible. It's like, ooh, bombed out air pound, bombed out air attack. It's just the same bullshit over and over again. And then Paris, and that's it. And then bombed out air attack. It's just annoying. Um... But uh, that's really just kind of what I'm going to ramble on about real quick. Played both games. Batman, really good. Not as good as Arkham Asylum. And then once again, Battlefield 3. Good, I guess. To, you know, if you get on online multiplayer. But not as good as Bad Company 2. In which case, I had like the onslaught mode and everything. Um, but, you know, that's just me. That's just how EA is going to go with it. And hopefully, it's not how the future of gaming is going to go. Because that's just kind of bullshit. But, as always, thanks for listening and watching. And I'll catch you next time.